I really enjoyed the Frick collection when I was there and all the other wonderful places of I course was an online thing the other day yes i was just going to say that yeah I wanted, to wonderful. I wanted to welcome you all and first just say i'm starting the recording um we have a nice group and i'm still uh bringing people on i'm barry kostrinsky this is artist talk on art um we are a 5013 nonprofit for over 45 years providing art talks in the new york city Lower East Side area. And of course, now due to the pandemic, we are presenting virtually. And it has been, of course, a terrible time, but in an odd way, a godsend for connecting with people who could not travel to the Lower East Side to our formal <laughs> presentation. So, welcome everybody. Right. Go ahead Hello, and continue Mary. sharing, continue sharing as, as I enter, pe as people enter. And in about five minutes or so, I'll sort of go one by one and ask you to share about your art. This is about, uh, you can share through this platform uh, using a, a screen share, share screen option. You can hold works up. Just keep in mind, we like to look at work for at least 30 seconds. Uh, so give it time. And uh, usually your senses will hold the work in the right place. And of course, beware, these, all these cameras are audio sensitive. So when you speak, it may take away, I do a lot of thumbs up to show agreement, but of course, chime in. This is about dialogue and about expressing and sharing, and you'll see commonalities and differences, and I think we're in for a great time. So again, welcome everybody, and thanks for making this happen. We put up a platform, you make it happen, you become a part of this, and something beautiful has blossomed. We're on our seventh event uh, every Monday. No plans to stop when we go back, to our talks, we will continue to do this virtually. So welcome. Wonderful. Thank you. Welcome everybody. Thank you, Barry. Having said that, maybe we should mm -hmm. jump in because we will get more people. And I was a little verbose as usual. Um, I see, uh, let's see, Stephen Hirsch. Are you ready to talk okay. with us? Um, I'm on my computer for the first time, so I'm kind of still figuring it out, but I got the screen up and everything. So I, I want to go into my photo app and do screen sharing. Um, and bear with me. This is again, the first time I've done this. So, uh, let me see. Give me one second here. We see you perfectly. You see me, right. But I'm just trying to figure out how to get through the to the screen share. He's on it. And let me say, uh, if you like, to, when the uh, artist is speaking, you can pin him, meaning in the top right of his image is the word mute and then three dots. If you hit the three dots, there's a pin. It says, let's see, let me do it. It says, uh, pin video. When you do that, it will focus on Stephen talking. Of course, at the end, you have to unpin it, so to speak. So having said that, we'll all share our te technical problems. We finally all help out. So. Okay, Barry, so um, I'm hitting screen share and it says host disabled attendee screen share. And so you have to turn something on. Let's see. That's a new one. Let's see. Hmm. I wonder if I can do that. We had a lot of them last week. I don't remember how they did it though. Is that the grid? Is that what you're talking about? The grid rather no, than the, the... The grid is in your corner. What he yeah. said, never come across, but let me see if I can uh, do that. Otherwise I may try somebody else and come back to you. Just cause I know uh, I can sort of, uh, uh, I, let's see, I could look at it. Probably in your preference somewhere obviously. Let's see, Steve, Steve Hirsch. Yeah. Oh, Spotlight video. You could try that. No, that's not. Um, I'm going to come back to you. Not saying, not saying it may be show up in the next person, but it's way for me to check if it is another. Uh, uh, it is your your system or me, uh, Robert. I see Robert Sherman. Sherman, correct? Yeah. Robert, yeah. do you feel like speaking first? Robert's in California. Let's see. 
are you are you talking there's two Roberts. one says robert's iphone yes robert's iphone but i sense he may have let me uh part of these yeah he doesn't have his audio on so robert zura would you like to start in sure let's see if the screen show for me oh no sorry you got a setting <laughs> Oh, okay. So it's like, yeah, it's on your panel there. All right. I've been doing a lot of zooming, so I'm pretty pretty familiar with the whole thing. So you definitely have permissions to set. I'll see. All right. Try. Let's see. Uh, it's working now, Barry. Okay. I pressed uh, a few buttons on the screen share. You want to go ahead, Stephen? Uh, sure. Um, so is that working now? Do you see the picture? Yes. Oh yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. So um, I was um, I was um, at the meeting a couple of weeks ago, and I um, I draw every day. So the drawings I'm going to show today are the ones that I've done since, I guess, two weeks ago when I was on last Barry, right? I think, yeah. So um, I draw every day. I'm a, a photographer by uh, occupation. And um, I started painting about three years ago, and I started drawing the first day I was home during the quarantine. And so these are the pictures that I've made during the quarantine. They're sort of coronavirus themed, I guess. and. Uh, but these are the ones just from the last week. So I have a lot, I had, I've done about 60 of them so far. Uh, wow. Yeah. Try Very to do nice. Today. Yeah, so this is one and I'll, I'll go. Is that Caron Dodge? Is that who? I don't what know. medium are you using? Oh, this is uh, pencils. Very nice. Yeah, it's pencils, yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm not sure what I, why I draw what I draw, um, but I do. So I'm, I'm not sure if you have any questions, just ask, but um, I just draw whatever's in my head at the moment. Um, before this, before this pandemic, what were the themes you were engaging? Um, they're pretty much the same thing except in some of these people wearing masks and the ones before nobody wore masks, obviously. So I think the only difference of my drawings versus my paintings is people are wearing masks in the later ones. Uh, and some of them anyway, nobody's wearing any in this one. Um, I was speaking to a gallerist yesterday and he had seen my work and we were talking uh, on the phone. And um, he told me he liked my drawings a lot better than my paintings. He said that something had changed dramatically when I started drawing. So I, I'm not sure what it is, but, um, and other people have said that, so it's changed kind of dramatically, I guess. Um, as a photographer, I was at 9-11, and I think like I do a lot of pictures of floating people in the air, and I think a lot of it has to do with being at uh, World Trade Center when the buildings came down. What were the size of these again? They're uh, eight inches by six inches, so okay. quite small. They look big on the screen, but they're small in, for, in reality. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, Stephen, you said that you were at 9-11 uh, at the time? What's that, Barry? You, uh, it's from Mitch. You worked on 9-11? I was, I was down at the World Trade Center on 9-11, yeah. Yeah. So, I, and these images are still coming from that period you, you're saying? I, you know, in my, the work that I do, the images come from everything I've done in my whole life. It's totally yeah, right. No, I understand that. But it's, it's very interesting because that was such an impact on you that it's interesting that it's, and this is also, you know, a similar kind of feeling that people are having. So it's probably bringing back uh, that kind of feeling again to you, you know, at least in this particular one that's on the screen right now, especially. Yeah, I mean, these are images in my mind that will never go away, you know, so we we live through, I mean, I see images in my, my work of um, women who I've been with and events that I've had, things that I've seen, things that I photographed, 
Mm-hmm. You know? So it's totally autobiographical. And no, it's, 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 uh, it's unconscious, but it's... Yeah. Uh, well, I don't it's know wonderful. if it's unconscious. What I, what I also noticed about this particular one, and maybe the others are similar, I didn't study them as much. I, it looks like you put the color down and then you draw into it, which is a very interesting um, process. I like it. Am I correct in that or no? The color down and draw into it. Um, yeah, you're, you have your colors, but then you've drawn over you, where you've delineated buildings and shapes of people. Actually, uh, I sketch it first and then okay. I put the color down. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's actually the opposite. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't matter. Any, whatever you're doing is works. It's very vibrant and, and full, filled with all kinds of energies. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm. I like it. Mm. Do you find, Stephen, that you enjoy this more than the artist photography? I do enjoy painting and drawing a lot more than photography. I loved photography. I've done photography my whole life. And um, I think I just kind of got tired of it because I've been doing it so long for so many decades uh, right. that I, I kind of got tired. So I needed a new horizon. I needed some new challenges. And then I started painting. It was sort of an evolution from my photography. My photography had started to go uh, abstract. I did a project called Gowanus Waters um, about six years ago. And it was very successful. It was a uh, it was photographs of the Gowanus Canal, the surface of the canal, and they were all abstracts. And then I made them very large. And then people thought they were paintings. And then the next, wow. pro- and the next, pro- if you look online, you can see them called Gowanus. Okay. My name. And then the next project I did was called Splat. And Splat was trying to create paintings through photography by photographing what was paint on the walls and grease stains and this and that and that that kind of evolved into me creating paintings to photograph and uh-huh. instead of finding things to photograph that look like paintings and then after that i i sort of like really got into it and just started painting and really don't even take that many pictures anymore wonderful that's exciting to just evolve yeah. into, into this whole new series and style of art congratulations thank you so much i'll go through some more quickly were those paintings were those uh, photographs the of of the guanas shown in the there's like there was a like a like a guanas museum type thing where they had um brooklyn uh, they saw a lot of different things there was that yeah yeah i happened to see that show oh cool um, and they were very large, weren't they? Probably? Yeah, they were very large, yeah. Yeah, they were amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank so, you. They were like 40 by 60. I yeah, tried to make them the size of what people would, you know, make the size of paintings now, which is really weird because the photographs were 40 by 60, but these drawings are only six inches by eight inches. So they're the exact opposite. I remember not, mm. not thinking that they were photographs. And I still remember them now. And that was the only time I ever went to that place. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool store. Oh, that- it was called the Guana Souvenir Shop, and it closed. Yes, that's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, it closed. There and I saw your stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice work. Thank you. Continue sharing images. Does anybody else have any questions? And we'll move on to someone else. We will go to Robert Zura next. Uh, any other questions? I'll just finish through these very quickly. Sure. Take your time. Yeah. Even slower, even slower. These are uh, well worth taking. Right, go back a little bit. Uh-huh. Well, it's kind of cool to show them this way on the screen sharing. It's a really cool thing to do. I was doing holding them up last time, you know, to the camera. I know, this is the uh, 21st century. I still hold up. <laughs> this is very cool, Barry. I mean, I got to give you some credit. This is great. I mean, uh, screen sharing and the virtual, uh, you know, uh, lecturing and things like that. It's really wonderful. Thanks. Yeah, and I love that we can be anywhere on our <laughs> earth. Isn't that great? It is. It is, yeah. And there are people... We love you, Barry. <laughs> I know Barry's last uh, yes. couple of weeks ago, Barry had people from South Carolina, I think. This terrific artist from South Carolina. And it was great because I, I did one of Barry's lectures at, uh, you know, in Gramercy Park, and um, which was great. And there were a lot of people there, but it was really people who only lived in New York who I guess would come uh, to lecture, you know, unless people travel from out of town to do it. But I, you know, 
This way you get people from all over the whole country, all the whole world. I guess. Well, thank you. But uh, I do want to point out, uh, they're not my talks. So thanks so much. This is Artist Talk on Art. And I am a small piece of our long history. And we have four board members and a board of eight that all pitch in. And uh, you guys are what make it happen. Again, we can only put up a platform. We can't, I can't make that work. That's great. You know, I see the micro, I see your personal, I see your thumbprint, and I see the macro. I could see universe, swirl, and bringing artists together to share their various imagery and hearing your trail from photography to painting. And of course, Robert Zura seeing that show, it's like a perfect synchronicity and quite a nice explanation from someone else seeing those photographs. Um, and yeah, um, I, I worked with kids during 9-11 a year or two after, and I was surprised, maybe I'm ignorant, there were a lot of buildings in those drawings and a lot of burning. And so, yes, like you say, you, uh, you work with uh, what's been on your mind, and there have been, uh, as Jackie pointed out, this is sort of like 9-11. But you did a great line about art. You said, images in my mind that will never go away. You could use that as a definition of a great work of art. Mm. Very much so. Yeah. Um, excuse me, last thing, uh, Stephen. Great presentation tonight. I mean, I've really seen as far as, you know, <clears throat> since uh, you've been on and seen the progression of what you've shown us. So kudos to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. That, that's the last one. Thank you. Um, I had a question about, I mean, I saw those, those photographs and um do you and, and i'm looking at these and these look so much more personal they look so much more what personal personal than the photo oh, personal yeah yeah and i'm wondering you know that's kind of interesting that one looks very process you know, photographs are like serious process and you know but i didn't see I mean, it's almost like your hand your your, your psyche wasn't in them as much, and these are very, very personal. How do, how do you how do you relate the two bodies of work, or do you not? How do I relate to what? I'm having trouble hearing you, Robert. Maybe I'm not. Maybe maybe my microphone's not that good. No, it's okay. It's just a little uh, disorder. How do you relate the two bodies of work? They seem, or do you, or do you? They seem very different. Oh, I see. Um, you know that that was totally abstract. It was more about technique than it was about anything personal. So there was no imprint of who I was in those pictures. They were just simply an exercise in making abstract art. It just, it was, um, it was something that I did. Um, I, was, um, I was sitting by the canal in 2010 and um, it started bubbling, like oil started bubbling. So I photographed it. And then um, I did so, I've done so many projects in photography and then uh, years later, uh, an editor from the New York Times contacted me and he wanted to know if I was doing anything new that I really liked the projects that I had done. And I said I wasn't doing anything in New York that was new. And then I thought about what I had done that day, which was literally uh, four years earlier. I went into my computer, I found the images, I sent it to him, and then he published them in the album on Sunday. It was like a whole page. Wow. It was great. And that kind of motivated me to go out and try to, to do them again. So I went back to the canal. It was the only time I'd gone back in the, that four year time span. And I started doing it again. And it was simply, uh, you know, um, it was simply a technical exercise almost. I mean, obviously I can see those images to make those abstracts, but for me, it was almost like a game. It was so easy for me to do once I understood what I was doing. And it was just simply, you know, making compositions of, of different color and shapes and design and things like that. If you look at the work, you'll understand what I'm saying. You, you know, you saw it, Robert. Yeah, that was my that was my take on them. Uh, that they were very, very processed, very technical. Yeah. And 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 impressively so too. Uh, but I like I like these works so much better. <laughs> yeah, it's about who I am. I mean, that wasn't at all. You wouldn't know who took those. Uh, pictures at all. If you know me, you would know that, you know, these are me. You know, you can see the mm -hmm. world. Uh, you can see the experiences here. Like there's one of the surfer and that was shot at Rockaway Beach as a photograph. And um, 
So some of these things, are, there seems to be a, um, an ongoing theme of a lot of blondes in my work. So I had a blonde girlfriend who I went out with for years. So she's sort of a woman in a lot of these pictures, so. She's your muse. She, she was Exactly. Was. I, yeah. I, have, I have a new muse now, so. Well, yeah. congratulations on all of it. It sounds terrific. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing your work. Uh, if you could stop the screen, Sherry, thank you so much. That was, okay. that was great. Always a great presentation. And, you know, you really yes. have a Sorry. sense of, uh, you know, how you evolve. So thank you. And uh, very, uh, very nice questions and responses, everybody. Shall we go to Robert Zura? Robert? Welcome. And where are you, Robert? Oh, let's see. We lost the sound. Let's see. <laughs> I think, Robert, you turn your mic off, I think. Yeah, I just. Um, I'm in Philadelphia right now. Can everybody hear me well enough? Yes. Okay, good. I'm in Philadelphia. I recently moved. I'm a New York native. I was born on 30th Street. And I lived there all my life. But um, when I quit my day job, I had to rent my loft in Brooklyn to, to live. So it's. Being rented, and I moved to Philadelphia for financial reasons. It's the only time I've ever been away from it for so long. Um, so, yeah, and in exile right now. Uh, try and speak just a little bit louder. Yeah, I got to get a microphone. This, the, the computer mic, I got to lean forward, I think, to, to get to it. Or maybe it's over there. I don't know exactly where it is. But uh, I'll share my screen. Let me just uh, uh, share Okay, that works. Yeah. So um, I'm a painter. I've been a painter for many years, but I uh, never made any money out of it. So it was never my profession. I've been doing it for many decades. Uh, these are all these are all within the last, um, I would say, the last few months. Um, I got the deep, there's like a I'm trying to get. Uh, they're, they're good. Just go a little. Give us a little more time to see the images. Nice. Oh, yeah, no, I was just trying to get rid of. There was uh, something showing up in front. Looks good on my end. Good. Yeah, mine too. These are all within the last month or two. Well, probably three months or so. Um, Very nice. What what oh, size? Back. What you size? Like yeah, that would, yeah. So yeah, how big is that? And what what what? That's thirty six by thirty six. Well, this is all on canvas. It's all oil. It's either on canvas or wood panel. Mm -hmm. Um. And they vary. The ones I've been doing recently are more or smaller, uh, not for any particular reason, but some of them are smaller. This one is is a larger one, it's 30 by 30. This one's a small little one, it's called Romance on the Gum Line. Oh, you can see the title. Yeah, the title. I don't know if you can see the title, but there, there it should be. I like the roots. <laughs> The yeah, right. right. Get, 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 get to the root of the issue. Yeah. Yes. Romance on the gum line. What do you do for a living, Robert? Well, I um, recently retired in uh, March of 2018. Before that, for about 20 years, I did uh, software development. Before that, I was a scrap metal man in Red Hook. Wow. And so I had a business. And when did you start painting? I started painting, I guess, in college. Uh, um, around 1959 or so. 1959? 69. 69. And when did you do this one? This was done two weeks ago. Is this much different than what you've done earlier? Well, I, from like 69 to about 80, I was doing watercolors. 
um, similar similar subject matter, but more going on. Um, so yeah, that you would notice well they were the same person who did them. I started in oil in the mid eighties. I mean, I, don't, I I generally once it's done, I you know I don't I have plenty of I don't have any right up now. I mean, I could find some if you guys are interested, but um, I'm only interested personally in what I'm doing now. You know, so that's why I'm showing the current ones. Um, so this is a bigger one. This is on uh, this is on panel. Uh, let's see what other ones. Here's a here's one from actually this was this was late late uh, late 2019, like in December. Robert, great. Robert, what what size are these? I'm sorry. This one is 30 by I mean 40 by 30, and this is uh, all on can. They're all on, on canvas. This one, is 12 by 10 by 12. A 12 by 10. This one is like eight, uh, 10 by, I mean, eight by, 10. this is 36 by 36. Again, yeah. Um, this is in progress right now. It's five, it's 60 by 60. So it's just sitting there in my studio right now. Uh, would, I, would I be right to say uh, you like Salvador Dali? You like Kandinsky's work? I love Kandinsky's work. I mean, Dolly is wonderful. I'm not a huge fan of Dolly. He's nice. But yes, Kandinsky, Gorky, Mata. Um, I love Bacon. I mean, I love a lot of artists that are not directly related to this to this process. I mean, I love the, the New York School. Uh, not all of it, but I like de Kooning and um, I love Arthur Dove, particularly. I love, not, I mean, he's not New York School, you know, uh, Charles Birchfield. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all I have. Oh, no, there's one. So, yeah, I mean, it, I don't like the surrealists because most of them are kind of cold and intellectual. I'm more more influenced, I think, by maybe some, you know, Italian Renaissance or um, well, they're more spiritual, I think. I love Leonora Carrington. Um, and, and let me ask you lastly, what do you think of the Carico? I do like him. I do very much. Uh, he's a little, he's a little, he's a little austere, but um, yeah, very much so. I assume so. Let me uh, let me say any questions. Let's ask maybe one or two. We do have a large group, and yeah. I'm going to move on. But Robert, this was a uh, beautiful work to see. Colorful, bright. You really go in the. A lot of painting is in the edge, in between where the things meet. And I like the way you develop the. You do sort of that little passage that's in cubism, where you open that space and create depth. Nicely done. Thank um, you. And thanks for uh, going off screen share. Any other questions? We'll, we'll take a minute or two and then we'll move along. Um, I just want to say I, I, I like the work. Um, it makes me think of uh, a little bit of a storyteller. Uh, some of it I could see in um, children's books or uh, adult books that are about dreaming. I think that's where I picked up a little on the, the dolly feel to it. Um, and I think they're, they're really great. They're really great. Thank you for sharing them. Thank you. I have one thing I'm going to put in the chat, which is something that I've been working on that everybody can, is invited to, uh, to visit. It's a, it, it, this is, a lot of this stuff has to do with, hold on a second. Uh, I'm going to type in a URL. Well, I'll let you, I'll let you go ahead, type into the chat. And by the way, anybody, Add your email, your links, anything you want. The chat button's there. I'm going to ask uh, Diana, would you like to go next? Diana Hobson, we'll reach out to California. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I don't have any prepared um, things that I could take you into. So I'm at my home, and I'm just going to take you around and look at paintings, if that works. 
<laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're getting a we're getting a virtual tour of your studio, right, Barry? Yeah, this is my home. Is this coming on? I don't see me in the screen. So no, I can't we can see you. It's working. Go in front of a painting and I'm, hold it and wait. It actually I see you perfectly set it on the screen, except not enough chin. That's perfect. So <laughs> do that and try and go to an object and you'll see, you'll be able to do it. This is an artist's test. Well, I'm in front of a painting right now. I have been for a bit. And, oh, I know. Maybe I need to turn it around this way. Perfect, oh. a little lower. You see, I don't see a painting on my screen. I see Zoom. No, no, we see it. We see it. Yeah. Okay. This is called Jester's Dance. Um, I knew I was going to be an artist when I was five, and I knew I was going to be an abstract artist when I was seven. One second, change wow. the angle. Go. We're, we're not getting the bottom. That's it. That's it. A little more. A little more. Perfect. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was in college, I got introduced to the work of Faber Beeren, who's the guy who invented that god-awful hospital green. But really what he did is he got safety in factories going using nothing but color. So I thought to myself, there's really something in this. And I spent a long time working with colors. And I was a young art star in Los Angeles. And they used to bring classes to my studio. So I would test out my ideas on these ladies, mostly ladies. And I would stand in front of one painting and tell them how it worked. And then I'd go back and forth with the leader, the teacher. And then I'd ask them, at, in front of a third painting, what's this painting all about? And it would always be a deadly silence. And this, a little hand would finally go up and they'd say, well, I think. And somebody else would say, I think. And then by the time they left, I realized 50% of them got it. So I figured out it was in good shape. And then the reviewer for the LA Times came to a show of mine and he figured out that my titles really meant something. So now I'm gonna take you to a very different looking painting. It's called Siesta, and it's about quiet time. So tell me if you see that properly. Wow. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So you can see that what I'm really doing is I'm using color to tell stories of a sort. Uh, the lines came actually originally from choreography. I did a lot of dance as a youngster. I'm not flexible enough to ever go pro, but um, I love it. I still watch a lot of it. And um, to me, they're kind of the persona of the painting. And then the spaces and the different colors are things that they kind of travel through in the course of the painting. So now I'm going to take you to one that was influenced by Jap Japanese art. Hang on. Mm. Can you see that properly? Oh yeah, the positive and negative spaces are pushing and pulling in this one. Yeah. And it's also a completely different color set. Can you step back just a little bit to do get the whole painting? Excellent, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Is that about right? Go a little lower. A little to the who knows? Very nice, yeah. Away from the door. <laughs> away, no, the other way. The other way, yeah. A little more. You're there. There you go. That's it. That's it. Excellent. Oh. Perfect. Don't move. <laughs> wow, nice piece. Um, Robert, <laughs> Motherwell, Robert Motherwell comes to mind, the Spanish effigy series. Well, I love Motherwell. Uh, my biggest influence of that school was Franz Klein. Uh, but of mm. course, does, well, he did use color. I've seen one show of his that, that had color in it, but um, it was the strength of his um, lines that really influenced me. Um, Kandinsky, of course, was another big influence. But my first, where I knew my life was changed, is I saw a, a reproduction in Life magazine of El Greco's Toledo in a Storm. And it was like I saw Mom. And I've realized as an adult that what interested me was the dynamics. That's a very energetic painting. And most of my art is also very energetic. 
Now I'm going to just show you one of my drawings, which most people call watercolors, but I don't draw much in just black and white. I a mostly little bit, a little bit further back so we can get it all in and a little bit away from that door hinge. A little back and lower a touch. You're there, a little higher, sorry. Move the piano to the right. A little tilted, but good. Thank you. Okay. So that's a quick tour. And um, any that questions? Was, that was a drawing, you said the last one? That's what I call my drawings, yes. And what, what do you mean, what you call it? Well, I, that's me just messing around, um, looking to see what happens if you do this or what happens if you put that color next to that because it all um, intermingles and talks to each other and you know a color will look very different next to one color than it will next to another so it's just me experimenting which is what most people do when they're just plain drawing and what do you draw with well that that's it watercolor it's watercolors okay but you're drawing with a brush yes okay so you're painting, why do you call it drawing? Because I'm thinking like I would if I were uh, a realist painter, um, where I would be sketching whatever I was sketching. Um, for me, I'm sketching um, color ideas. I guess, nice. in a way, I guess in a way, uh, sketching, drawing, uh, painting, you know, it's uh, uh, whether you do a process where you first draw lines and then paint in or vice versa, uh, they're different in many ways, but they're the same, but a brush, very different than a pencil line. And uh, in essence, uh, very funny things we do as artists, we move our fingers in very specialized ways around the stylus. It's very funny when you think of it. Um, sorry to go uh, on that trend. I want to move on to Helene Solar. Um, Helene, is that good? And did I pronounce That's it? Fine. Correct. Very good. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome. Where are you, Helene? I'm in uh, Queens. I live in Bayside, Queens. Nice. And just a uh, pro great proximity to Manhattan. So I'm <laughs> in Manhattan a lot when wow. the transportation <laughs> is working. <laughs> yeah. So the museums, galleries, a lot of meetings, etc. How wonderful. And, uh, I've uh, I've been in meetings at the Artist Talk on Art over many years. So wonderful. Uh, yeah, and at one time I was on a panel there. And uh, I'm a lifelong artist. I started uh, painting in oils when I was 10. I took serious lessons at that time and uh, really learned the fundamentals. And uh, they've been with me forever. And uh, I studied at Pratt, and it, uh, I got a BFA, and uh, I was a commercial artist, fine artist, and teacher. Wow. And, <laughs> yeah. And it's, so it's a thread throughout my life, but I've always been painting. And uh, I studied uh, with Jacob Lawrence at the New School for three years. It was a wonderful experience. He was very encouraging of my work. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, so I'm a painter. <laughs> and uh, so I'll show you my latest series of work. Because of the virus, I'm uh, primarily in my home studio. I have a studio in Port Washington, New York as well. And, um, but I've always had my home studio, which is my living room. <laughs> and uh, I've developed this series of work based on my walks. Uh, everything seems to be more re heightened reality as I walk and as I um, paint the environment, uh, creating awareness of our ecosystems and uh, the impact on our lives. I try to make the connection to the human experience with the larger issues that uh, the work portrays. And I play with uh, expressionism, abstraction, and realism, uh, combining both of them and then uh, heightening the reality of what I see. And I uh, base my work on observation. 
and uh, I, I use my iPhone quite a bit now for rest as my sketching. And uh, so as I was walking, I've been taking photographs and then uh, internalizing the experience. So uh, this is my latest, and I feel like uh, I made a breakthrough due to not being distracted by being able to run to meetings, etc. And uh, the reality of uh, what I'm seeing is uh, very powerful. Can you so, uh, nice. show us on uh, how do you want to share your images? You're gonna uh, I'm not, uh, I can't find that. Uh, whatever it is and I don't I'm not at I'm on my iPad so I don't have my computer to pull up the images you want to bring your iPad to some works in your home yeah that's what I'll do excellent it sounds uh, great yeah this is uh, my space it's about four feet wide <laughs> between my table and uh, the window surrounded by nature here are some of my I don't know if you can see some of my plants well that's that's lovely to have nature so close to and you. here and then out my window I have a beautiful view nice so, <laughs> and uh, here is my uh, my work and um, if you can okay see. This is uh, 24 by 24. I uh, started out uh, painting in acrylic, but uh, since 89, I've been working in, uh, I mean, I started out in oil and I painted till the 80, late 80s, and then I switched to acrylic because it was easy to adapt to uh, extreme heat as I painted outdoors. So, uh, here I'm combining my observation with my imagination and interpreting. Can you and step back one. a little bit, Elaine? Okay. Sorry that I'm no, it's okay. not as steady. We're all learning. We're all learning. That's <laughs> excellent. A little yes, we are all learning. This is only my second time with Zoom. Yeah. So, very, I have to. Very nice line. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I like the colors and it's very timely with the environment and what's going on today. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm also trying to relate one's experience to nature and making that connection. I see that, yeah. Okay, I'll try, I'll bring the other one on. Uh, also, uh, go again. <laughs> this is another thing, a downed tree. The uh, angle, change, change the angle you're viewing a little and come back a step. Uh, Oops. That's better. And now change the angle a little lower. Maybe a little higher now, but we're getting there. That's very nice painting. Thank you. You like it? Is. You like Philip Gustin? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I was thinking of him. I haven't seen, I, <clears throat> there was a gallery in Manhattan uh, across the way from uh, the Mary Boone Gallery that uh, showed a lot of Philip Gustin. So I had a chance to really study it. This was a few years ago. And uh, I just fell in love with his work. It's just absolutely incredible. I love the painterly quality and his powerful imagery. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Let me, let me open up questions. Anybody who wants to ask uh, Helene anything or chime in with thoughts, and as well, I may have cut questions by mistake at Diana Hobson. If anybody wanted to ask her anything before I moved on, feel free to ask, and then I'll uh, we'll, we'll move forward. But thank you, uh, Helene. Very nice. And okay, uh, I have a couple of more. Okay, a couple more is good. 
Okay, and this is another one. This is more my lyrical style. And uh, we'll a, little back, a little back and a little angle change. <sighs> Very nice. Let me ask you, you, you started painting when you were 10 and you've, yes. you, you, you've expressed the mature theme, um, experiencing nature. What did you work on when you were younger, maybe between you know, 10 and 18? What was your painting themes? Well, I was doing uh, still life. I did a whole series of pastel uh, still life. Uh, and I did uh, uh, a paper bags, a whole series of pastel paper bags that was very successful. And then I did a, uh, it was just more or less for my surroundings. And also as a student, I concentrated on uh, figurative work and uh, expressionistic. I was more expressionistic. And uh, my earlier work was more representational as though but it wasn't for photographic representation and uh, this is uh, a painting that's hanging up in my house uh, this is uh, i had a big show at city corp center a few years ago and uh, i did uh, this was one of the paintings in that exhibit it's wonderful when you, when you when you back up we can see it uh the whole complete artwork a little bit higher though yeah a little higher and back it's wonderful oh thank yeah. you really beautiful so that's yeah. my lyrical painterly style i love the color palette oh, yeah it's so it's so beautiful yeah. Thank you. Can you come back a little bit more, Helene? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we're, and, we're getting more of the ceramics, which are quite nice. Uh, uh, that's by a famous ceramist, uh, Toshiko Takiezu. Mm. This is uh, her, uh, her pots. Can you see them? Oh, yes, very well. Those are gorgeous. Nice. Yeah, yeah gorgeous. She, she was. Uh, and an, she's an internationally known ceramist. Am I right to mm -hmm. say, Elaine, that uh, comparing your earlier work to now and a theme that other artists have presented, you've sort of loosened up in your style and are, I don't want to use the word relaxed, but there is something uh, different. Um, and I think uh, we heard, uh, you know, I think with Stephen who said about from photography to painting and gallerist mentioned his drawing because Maybe that's freer expression. Is that true? And certainly the, the ceramic work you showed, the Asian work, that is about a very free, loose, and at the same time controlled hand in a minimal expression. So. Yes, well, that's what I'm uh, trying for. I have a lot of small, uh, uh, small work also, and I'm sort of developing from that. And I, I actually do feel that sense of freedom. Uh, that I had in my earlier work, and I wanted to regain that sense of immediacy, yet uh, bring forth a lot of strength and uh, show some discipline as well. So I was, I've been working on that, and I, so I have a series of work uh, based on that. Uh, I, I uh, had a residency, oh, here it's a tour. I just found, I was uh, looking for paper. Oh, well, I don't know how to get it on the screen. That's okay, let me see, does anybody have a question? And we'll yeah. finish. This is uh, what I do, I sketch while I'm uh, relaxing, these uh, my little uh, sketches. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you, I have a whole series of that. And I, uh, my main thing, before I uh, started, I had two other things. I'm doing uh, water environments and uh, national park art, uh, uh, rock formations. Wow, all with nature, very nice. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing these uh, water environments for a long time. I don't know what it is. at Elaine's web webpage and uh... I guess these are pictures from the uh, show at City Corp building. 
Which ones? In the lobby, on, on your yes. website. Yeah, they're quite amazing. Oh, thank you very much. Do you yeah, live the near the water? Do you go down by the water, down by the bay? Uh, well, I've uh, worked from uh, two major spots. One was upstate New York. That's where I got the original inspiration for, uh, because the light is so beautiful at uh, Yardo Gardens in uh, Saratoga Springs. And then I went to uh, the actual New York Botanical Gardens, and I always photograph when I'm there. And I have a whole series of work from that. And uh, those are my main inspirations for the water plant series. You know, you live near, I, I grew up in Bayside, it so happened. Oh. Yeah, so you live near the uh, Alley Pond Park. Let me, yeah, uh, not far. Let me, guys, let me... Uh, let me move to another artist and understand this sure. is weekly, so we can develop themes. Thank you uh, very much. Oh, that was great. Really Thank you for walking around Helene and showing it. And very nice work. Everyone continues to surprise. Mark Straddle, will you have some nice work behind you, Mark? Where are you from? Hi, my name is Mark uh, Straddle. I'm from Long Island originally, um, but I worked uh, many years in Manhattan in advertising. and. Um, Based, I'm primarily a photographer, and then um, I would just go to museums and I'd see Winslow. It started with a Winslow Homer show down in Washington, and then, uh, and I just like I we lost I, your video. I think we lost oh, your video. Sorry, sorry. So uh, I, I did go to School of Visual Arts, and I did watercolors back then, but, but it was just I was just pecking around. I hadn't found myself yet. So then about I would just you know sing a sergeant and. I just was always amazed at watercolors. So I guess I'll do it this way if, if that works. Um, so I started these about, um, I don't know if you can see it. I started these about, um, I don't know, three years ago. And I started at 30, what was it 22 by 32? Now these are up to seven feet in, uh, in width. Wow, those are large images. And you know, it's, like, it's, it's really great listening to other people, what they do in their experience. And I'm and I'm, I'm realizing about myself. Wow, I'm really quite a romantic. Um, <laughs> so um, this is a young child. I'm I'm 65, and you know, I think many of us online today are you know approximately at that age. But I have this deep love of life that I'm feeling even more and more with time and age. And um, and then the other thing I started to realize is that it, you know I want to say that maybe I was influenced by. Um, <laughs> A Chuck Close, um, but then there's like something else. I'm, I'm realizing that I, I just love eyes. I love you know like that. Um, this is another one it's called Jazz Man. Um, I work from photographs. I start with that, and then I just start to to uh, draw and refine. Um, and uh, I also I played guitar for twenty years, so I love this one because it's Gibson. Um, but um, I'm not really, I wasn't really set up for this. Let me see, I have some more in the other rooms. There's like layered, there's, um, there's probably seven images under that. So this is the last one I was working on. Um, and I call it, it's about uh, Health to Skelter. It's called Health to Skelter. And um, about this insane time we're going through and how, what I kind of hate about maybe representational images it's not deep enough that there's we are very intense people and there's a lot going on and that's what i love about this is um you can see the face and then her glasses is a clock and then a picture of the globe uh, and then the express sign from that's actually bogart street in brooklyn um and these are watercolors and i just i i, I kind of like i uh, i love the way and i'm new to them that we have this like improvisational you know just drips and then this very um, focused uh, watercolors. And I just, it, it, I began having this love affair with brushes, which I can't do on digital, that um, I love painting. So um, we have others here. It's called Madam Butterfly. Are you still there? Oh yeah, we're yeah. here. I, I like, you know, what you said reflected something an art, artist said a previous Monday how then you went into the eye or into an object 
and there's something else there. You're layering words in. As you go into the micro detail, you open up a little uh, micro universe um, unto itself and have a layering inside. That makes it very interesting visually. And you're comparing the drip, the sort of free run, to almost a graphic style or graffiti screen imagery. And uh, I do like certainly uh, seeing an image of a map and uh, a nice combination. Thank you. So, um, and, and then I, I, I think the, the battle I'm having though is it's like, when do you, when do you stop? And because and, I think one of my favorite shows was at the Met about a year ago and it was uh, Studies of Old Masters. And you could see the, you know, the pencil drawings and it like wasn't done. And to me, that was the most fascinating thing because they, one, they could breathe. Um, and I love that. So it's in my work, it's like, when do you stop? And uh, so that's where, so like, I was like, do I erase these little pencil lines? This is where I was supposed to continue. And I said, no, no, leave them. It's, um, you know, for posterity or whatever. That, that, not that it's not done, it's actually done. But um, that there's a process that's going on that, um, that it's not just magic and made with mirrors, that a, a person made this, that I fought with it, you know, that, you know, it was, it was a struggle at times, but yet, you know, here it is. And then there's just like, I don't know, let me see if I can do some more. I don't know what's here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Uh, and I'm very entranced and in, in, um, interested in this theme of um, universality and as woman is the mother of the world. And um, so a lot of times I love putting globes in stuff when I can. And um, again, the eyes um, mm. and this whole transparency. I just, I just think watercolors are the most elegant medium and I don't do acrylics or oils. Um, in fact, I'm a digital photographer. I just, started these about about three or four years ago but this size about two years ago and um i don't know just like this this love affair i don't know what else i got here i have no idea mark mark do you have a graphic background a graphic background well yeah i spent um i spent 10 years at bbdl um doing their stuff um but again, like someone else was saying, I, I, I love playing around with color and um, what that can do. Um, yeah, I mean, was there, I mean, I, you know, I think growing up, um, I loved Alphonse Mucha, you know, and, and hair, hair to me has content. Sounds crazy. But the way you approach, you know, hair, um, I don't know if that makes sense, but um, yes, I have a graphic background. Did you say hair has content? Yes, absolutely. That's a great line. You threw out like, when do you stop? All artists deal with that. You know, maybe some don't, but I think we all do. Um, uh, you fight with it. You fought with it. It's a struggle. Those words could be applied to millions of artists. And of course, hair has content. I like that one. And yes, any object can reflect everything. There's no question about it. And we bring with it sort of our social uh, and cultural background knowledge to it. But you're right, hair, how you wear it. Um, there's so many reads, and of course, hair is an African art. You know, ha hair goes a long way. I do like that. Any thoughts for Mark? Mark, thank you. A nice presentation. Hi, Joe. Mark? Yes. It's Mitch, how are you? Hey, Mitch, how are you? I'm here because Hi, of Mitch. Mitch, how, how I learned. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Now, okay, you have to take your, what is it, your laptop or your phone and yes. bring it over to that corner behind. That's the most soul I really know. What, the photographs? Over the wall behind you. Exactly. Talk to us about that. Oh, so, okay. So I spent all these years at BBD you know, doing like Pepsi and ABC and CBS. And seeing this whole side of a world a lot of people don't get to see. And I hated it. I just absolutely hated it. And I would go, I would go across the street to the Whitney and just dream and see Jasper Johns. And, and, and I was like, someday, someday, I'm going to escape this prison and I'm going to be an artist. 
So I'm like the anti-establishment, anti-corporation. Everything I, I guess, used to, to work for, I, I became the anti. Um, I forget the name of this guy. It's actually, by the way, these guys are always, always me. Um, so it's this corporate guy, it's the Chrysler, uh, you know, the ornament. And it's basically like Wall Street and how it's, it's an unfair thing. It's like these Wall Street traders are inside traders and they could trade in a second, whereas it's an open market and, and the rest of us don't have a clue. I mean, they'll sell out one, and by the time we sell out, we're, we're stuck. So we're just showing this inequity within life. Um, here's one, I don't know if you can see it. It's behind the watercolors. Um, that was probably the first one, which it's called The Capitalist. And um, uh, he's on a broomstick and there's like little skeletons here and there. Um, get to another one. And this one, um, I think it's called Decisions, right? And um, so it was like this evolution of, of digital photography. I, I use masking and that, it, that is something I would use at DVD, you know, uh, in film though. This is called Lovers. Um, and um, it's how do I use it to my advantage? This is a great skill, you know? And um, so obviously I had to learn computers to begin with. And um, it was his evolution. So now I, I, as equally, I had to get the right equipment, which was very expensive, um, like a $10,000 computer and then the software and then large format cameras. Uh, th then I would do the masking. I mean, just having a camera and computer isn't good enough. You have to know how to use them. So I'm able to blow these up to five feet now uh, without grain. And they're all on canvas. <laughs> And I started adding patinas on top. I don't know if you can see that. Because one of the things I hate about digital is it looks flat and it's too neat and it's too, you know. So um, that's my digital. That's what Mitch knows me for. But uh, I'm like. Thank you, Mark. Very I nice. Lot of stuff. Can, I, can I ask Mark a couple questions? Sure. Thank you, Barry. Uh, Mark, I just want to say I, I, I really like your work. Um, the works on paper, uh, because of your advertisement background, um, I like the surrealistic effect. Now, different than the digital uh, mixed media work on canvas, the large work on paper, if I understand correctly, that's something you're doing um, just all by hand or you're combining it as a mixed media as well? Because it's a large piece of paper, I put a lot of thought into it. So it, it's, um, it, it, it starts with a photograph and then I change things. I draw, I love, Michelangelo was my man growing up and I'm a millennial artist. So I will then spend another two or three days altering it by changing things. And, um, and so linear, being a linear artist very much plays into being a watercolorist, if I'm answering your question correctly. Um, and then just combining them and it's just but this then something else happened along the way which is watercolors which is the medium itself which i believe changed how i do things yeah um, yeah i like i'm sorry go ahead when i'm doing digital i can't really it's hard for me to enter my my hands into a digital piece whereas in right. with watercolors it's like i have this norwegian austrian background and i think it very much comes out this yeah that's why i asked you that because i see that and um i know one of the challenges artists that i've worked with before is when you go large which is impressive with any type of medium on paper whether it's watercolor or pastel or um you know different types of media is when you go large is how do you present it to the collector to the gallery um have you tried different ways of getting that work on paper uh installed like maybe um large board or transferred oh. onto um you know metal or something like that so i i had a one-man show at the denise Bybro years back and like 500 hours later after the moving van and driving uh one of the things that also plays in the watercolors which i love is i can roll them up and put them in the back seat of my car i can have That's a true. Hot show of like 20 pieces and, and, and a roll of paper, which I love. Now, some of the galleries, you know, oh, oh, we them framed. And I'm like, you know, it, it's, I, that's your job. 
And that's uh, when I learned, I, I worked in a, muse, uh, a gallery in the 80s, and I learned that people would, they would spend $100 on a piece of art and spend another $600 framing it. And I'm like, I'm not going to bother because I know people have different tastes and I'm not okay. going to, you know, change and, and do the whole schlep thing all over again when I don't need to. If you like the art, buy it. I'm not going to, you know. Okay. Thank you. I, that's, that's, a good, that's a good answer. And I was just curious. Thank you for sharing. I, uh, the work's wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank you, Mark. I did want to make a little announcement. Um, you know, we, uh, we do a lot of programming at, at the ATOA, and we're trying to do everything as a free event, and we will continue to do so. But we just want to ask for your support, if you can, and if you want to. Um, all the information's on our website. We can accept payment even through the phone or credit cards. Um, anything helps. We're going to continue growing and doing more events and putting on more and more panels. I want to continue with this uh, and reach out to some people who haven't spoken as of yet. But just say, uh, our help sort of makes it so we can do it more. And a little goes a long way when a lot of people do it. So whatever works for you, and thanks for your support, everyone, whatever you can do. Um, I see... Uh, Robert's iPhone. Robert, uh, do you want to speak? But I don't see any video. Can you hear me? Yeah, oh. we. I could hear him a little bit, but I think on your Zoom, is doesn't he need to put it on video and then he gets audio and video, uh, Barry? So go ahead and put it on, and then of course we can take it off. See what happens. Let's try that, Robert. I'm assuming you can hear me. Um, Otherwise, we may just run to something else real quickly. Uh, but give it a try. I'll see if I can invite you in. Let's see. Uh, Thank you, Barry. I'm going to ask you to start the video. That should work. Let's see what else I can do. Well, you give that a try. We can always come back to you. I'm going to sort of, uh, uh, let's see. She's. I'm going to ask Mitch Pilnick. Uh, actually, Mitch's video's off. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, Roberta, would you like to say a word or two? Just introduce yourself, and then we'll come back uh, to Mitch. And uh, well, what about uh, Sophia over here? Let's let's start talking to her. I'm looking for her. Why? I, oh, She's oh. Here. <laughs> Sophia, you. <laughs> oh, her video was off. I was looking Sophia, for her. Sophia, do you want to show your work and talk about yourself? We'd love to hear. <laughs> Me? <laughs> uh, sure. Um, oh, okay, the thanks. intern Sophie. Okay, we had someone else. Okay. There she is. Hi. Well, Hi, Sophia. Uh, Show us. I guess I can screen share my work really right. quickly. Um, I guess a lot of my inspiration lately has been uh, the global pandemic we're all facing right now. So I made a mask. Wow. Um, and I used all of the flowers and stuff that are around my campus and I dried them. And uh, yeah, I feel like it's interesting because like the only thing that's thriving right now, um, despite the turmoil, like so many people are living through is nature and the ecosystem like um like how helene was talking about um yes so yeah that's my mask i recently made and then i also like to paint a bit um it's but, gorgeous thank you so much um, are you yeah. still in school uh, i just finished my last semester so now I'm on summer break but yeah I really like or I like to implement it into my daily life I've been taking a bit of a break lately though because it's just been pretty busy so yeah is this the type of work you do all the time or do you do something else I've been really playing around with mediums a lot like this is not something I've ever done but I really enjoyed actually working with natural materials um, mm -hmm. But I've been getting into like sewing, um, so I took a class on that, and like welding, 
And I used to do a lot of painting and spray painting. Uh, I have a website that I can link down below. Um, but yeah, I feel like this year has been my time to just experiment with like a bunch of different mediums. And like, I really like using like natural materials. I never like realized how fun that would be to like work with, but it turned out to be really cool. You know, I gotta say as an object, it's a great piece. But as a photograph, it's another thing as well. And um, it, you can add layering to these things and treat them as sculpture. And then you can also treat the photographs as photographs of the objects. And I know artists who have built whole sets for months, photographed it and destroyed the sets, which I thought was a little something. But you know, I love the object, but somehow that blue LED and the way you caught it, and it's, you know, it's, it's of interest too. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was fun to photograph. Um, I have it with me right now. I, maybe I can show you guys on in real person. Wait, how do I just, okay. This, this is it right here. This is what it looks like in real life. But, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> nice. You want it outside? Yeah. Have you worn it? Uh, I haven't worn it actually. I'm kind of uh scared it might fall apart but i maybe i'll try it could be a cool photo shoot <laughs> performance moment it's a yeah later, and then you video it you know you know how you can play that um that's right yeah on last week there was an artist who not only painted but he also painted clothing yeah love that you would have loved it yeah that sounds really cool so let's see something else that you've done Sure. Let me go to my art uh, folder. <laughs> uh, one guy over here. This is a fun one I did actually in high school, but I still like it a lot. I, I think it's a fun thing to look up. <laughs> this is with spray paint and then also just with like acrylics. Um, and then I collaged the body on top, which was fun. So yeah. it's a collage and done with spray paint? Mm-hmm. Mm. I used a checkered stencil. Does I didn't really have much, like, there wasn't much thought process behind it, to be honest, but I don't know, it was fun to do. <laughs> and how old were you? Uh, I think I was 18 when I did this. I'm 20 now. So, yeah. Didn't we see Definitely a, a fun piece. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <clears throat> Didn't we see another work earlier by one of the other artists that did a black and white breakup in the background? I recall that. Um, just the same, just to show you, there are certain themes that are gonna pop up. And as well, your uh, graphic senses are obvious and minimalizing the figure to just two legs and the mouth that works you know that's you got cartoon you're getting the essence and you know you very nice work and you've got that cleanness to the way you broke up the grid very different than the other artists you're black and white uh the contrast to that and the loose line the sort of playful and doing the long and skinny is fun it's not easy to do those little bumps at the knee and the ankle Giacometti was the master at it and uh you know it's it, you can get a lot of depth and 3D going on in a small space uh, when you narrow and bump and you do it well. Thank you so much. And I have one last one to share. This is one I did uh, last summer. Uh, do you see it? This was a little more risque, but <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a clockwork orange guy and a bunch of people. Um, mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My his eyes. Yeah. Sometimes you see things and you feel like everyone's just wearing glasses and they're not seeing anything. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of people not, uh, you know, following the six foot guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very yeah. intense, and I like the way you have him as a main subject and everything around very subtle black and white. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's 
that image from uh, Clockwork Orange, I've seen it recently. That is a such a strong image from the film. It's being played out today in advertising. Um, you're picking up on it, but your point, uh, everyone's wearing glasses and no one's seeing, that's taking it a little further. Um, uh, and uh, I, I think you make it there with the faces sort of smiling gleefully with their 3D, you know, I, I think I get it. Um, and yeah, the contrast to bring it out, the finished, unfinished, the black and white, the well, very well painted face of Rodney McDowell. Very cool. Thank you. Thanks for letting me share. Oh, thanks for, you know. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, very nice. Did uh, everybody share who wanted to share? Do we have uh, the Amy, would you like to speak or Mitch or any of the board members? Mitch, I know you said you wanted to share a story. Uh, Robert's iPhone is still... Uh... Yeah, I was hoping that we could get um, Robert Sherman's presentation in. I'm sorry, there's technical difficulties today with his phone. Uh, today is his second time, like my second time. I, I don't know what happened with that. No problem. Uh, uh, Mitch, do you want to share something? Yes, something very brief. So back in 2013, when I joined TOA, I did the first panel, which was a huge success, and it was called How to Market Yourself. And I had quite a lineup of panelists. One of them was a gentleman named Brainard Carey. Oh, wow. An artist. Big name. Smart guy. And so, you know, he's an artist that collaborates with his wife. He basically a lot as far as writing books and assisting artists through a program he has. Artists, both of them are it's difficult for them to that's not, you know, their skills. So this basically assists them. And I hadn't connected with him since today. Always on his mailing list, but didn't have the time. But because of the period we're going through, he had a webinar to <clears throat> talk to artists about what he does. And it was nice. absolutely great after basically six years to reconnect with him. And that's one of my thanks to ATOA for really, you know, the relationships and uh, community that I've been uh, fortunate to be a part of. So ATOA still keeps on giving. That's true. That's yeah. true. Um, maybe I'll just, uh, uh, I'll say thank you. I, I want to share one work by a friend of mine, Dan Asher. May or may not be a name you know, but Dan was, uh, Lower East Side artist in the 80s and very much was a fixture in the New York art scene from late 70s to maybe in 2012. I'll go with the high tech method. I pull the painting off the wall. <laughs> and I think you see it. So, Dan, he did a series, I call them a mask series. There are many in this, very much like Basquiat's at the time. That was a great guy, uh, good friends with Anthony Hayden Guest. Unfortunately, was a very hard person to get along with. Roberta Smith gave him a very big review at the end of his life before he passed at White Columns, a uh, very successful exhibit. Uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, just wanted to share an image. Uh, Thank yeah. you, Barry. Very strong work. Yes, uh, as uh, Dan was the real deal, as uh, I was told, and it was obvious and volatile, but he photographed icebergs in Greenland that were beautiful and serene. And then he photographed wrestling where people bled. And then he did uh. paintings that are expressionistic, German-like, and he is shown in Germany. and. Someone asked me, yeah, I, and I can tell you he did clay works and then he had his music. So I think artists, and I, as a recap, uh, we like to explore and try different things. We like to expand. Um, photographers evolve to painters. Painters decide to go drawing. 
watercolor might bite you is, you know, your method. And whatever it is, you can be sure in three years, you may change. You may keep your same core. Some of you uh, that expressed a lot of change over time, still the early work had still life in it, which is nature. So the nature was repeated, but maybe in a different way later. Um, and often art changes totally. Uh, artists do not have to follow a linear line in any way. This has been a pleasure. You guys make this happen. Uh, this is Artist Talk on Art. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Go to our website, it's atoanyc.org, or reach out to me or any of the board members if you ever want to know anything about us. And, you know, we have lots coming. We're interested in proposals for panels. If anybody wants to reach out with ideas, um, we have a lot of great thoughts that have been expressed here in a very casual but also very intellectual way. I think a very free way. It's nice to see artists talk like that. Thank you all. Thank you. It was wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barry, Roberta, and Mitch. And all the wonderful artists. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. See you Thanks. next week. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs> thank you, Barry. Bye -bye. Mitch. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Talk soon. Thank you.